proud member of the Otaku Legion. And if you're a proud member of the Otaku Legion, make sure to subscribe to keep up with my latest videos. So there's this community on the internet that's just fundamentally flawed now. If you haven't familiarized yourself with the title, the community is called uh, Bikini Armor Battle Damage, and they essentially take already good and perfect female character designs and make them shittier. Now the group claims it's for more realism and stuff, but in fact it's making it worse, and I'll explain why later in the video. Jesus fucking crisis wig, oh my gosh. Kiwi Farms described this site as a feminist geek site where a bunch of prudish ladies like to complain about female characters who don't wear outfits that cover a minimum of 90% of their bodies and look like they have a figure in. Based on all the horror and stuff I've seen, I feel like that's pretty accurate, but uh, you guys can decide for yourself. So this is an example of what they do. Thick straight hair with a nice lustrous shine? Nah, just make it thin and frizzy. Large beautiful blue eyes? Make them small and shitty eyes. Glowing radiant skin? Nah, just make it dark to make her look part African. A nice, thin, well-toned body? Let's add some weight. Large and youthful tits? Nah, can't have that. A sexy and dynamic outfit? Nah, just throw some dirty rags on her that look hideous and don't even have the colors work together. Literally, none of the physical traits that made the character attractive in the first place have been passed down. This just seems like a sad attempt to normalize ugly characters and lower the standards, which in turn is a really obvious projection of their insecurities. Here's another example to prove that I'm not cherry picking. They changed this to this. While there are things wrong with the costume itself, my main problem is what they did to her body and her looks. First off, in addition to the tits making and making them a lot smaller, they got rid of her eyeshadows, gave her some weird ass man eyebrows, and then took her long feminine beautiful hair and then gave her some weird ass lesbian haircut. And this is coming from a group that just wants to give women appropriate attire. So, have I reached conspiracy territory, or do you see the same stuff I'm seeing? Let me know down in the comments. Anyways guys, this is Otaku King 69 signing out. Many of the female characters I love have come under fire for the way they're dressed and portrayed. Suddenly, these characters I look up to and gained inspiration from are being treated as victims, needing rescuing and social reform. Naturally, a lot of this comes from their portrayal as attractive. Certain groups in society are rejecting sexy female heroes because of the supposed standards it places on real women, feeling the pressure to hit unrealistic expectations. Any men who defend these original designs are quick to be labeled virgins, incels, neckbeards, pedos, and perverts, when for many that's simply not the case. For me, the bare midriffs, abs, thigh highs, skirts, upskirt kicks, cleavage, and underboob have all become part of my aesthetic vocabulary as things that I find awesome in the same way my child self used to like jetpacks, capes, giant swords, and how many people around the world love lightsabers. Let's look at Alyssa from God Eater. I mention her a lot, but it's relevant. Look at this freeze frame. Let's count the unrealistic things in it. She has long hair, unfit for battle. There's the obvious midriff and breast exposure particularly with how unlikely those melons would ever stay under that feeble flap of cloth called a top. She's got heels, which are clearly a handicap. She has a hat, which would have to be glued to her head to stay on while fighting. But put that in context. She has a giant sword that is likely many times heavier than her, a sword that can transform into a gun, or even unleash a monstrous set of fangs to omnom her enemies. She's swinging this sword after jumping high into the air from rest at a mutated lion god that channels electricity. None of this is realistic. None of it. It's all fantasy, and we know it. Yet her criticism comes from the outfit alone. I'm sorry to say this, but no amount of heavy fabric is going to protect her from a monster that could tear her in half with a single slash. Society is quicker to lock onto sexual fantasies more often than other fantastical elements in fiction because women are feeling shamed or victimized by what they perceive to be unattainable beauty standards. They don't want the female body to be commodified. But in fantasy, pretty much everything is, without bias. Yet, many insist that fictional characters are mandating their life choices simply by existing. In other words, they won't let fiction be fiction.